What's up, YouTube? Joe Catch Polly again, sitting on the couch, making some money investing in real estate online. At least I hope I am. Uh, we're, today I'm going to be looking at another um, controversial investment using a credit card to buy real estate. Uh, I, you know, I, I put out a video about this a couple of days ago. It's been one of my most popular so far. Um, I, I mostly discourage people from doing it. I think that it's not. Uh, you know, it's. It, I think it's too high risk for for most people. Um, and I think you know the the use case that I I picked out the other day was one where it seems like it's a, a relatively certain as far as you, you know that can be in investing um, short term gain that I you know stood to make and I just used the card um, because I didn't have money on the platform at the moment. And it takes a little too long to put money on the platform. Um, and so I think that that's one case where it might make some sense to do that. If you think you, you have an opportunity uh, to get, you know, a, a strong return and but you think that's going to disappear real quick. And so you just need to jump in and, and do it now and you have a, a card attached to the site. But I, I got a lot of comments from people about, um, you know, using zero interest rate credit cards and doing balance transfers. And, oh, you can actually lever up and buy a whole bunch. Um, so I wanted to really think that through and do some math on it. And so, you know, because I am a spreadsheet nerd, right? Always, always looking at this. And so I just was like, okay, well, let me look through the credit cards I have and what kind of offers they currently have. Um, I'm just using a round number, a thousand bucks on this. Uh, I realized in by digging it in my accounts of cards that I don't ever use uh, that I get constantly different offers. And so I think by combining a couple, um, you could see the potential uh, to, to maybe get some pretty cheap money, uh, at least for about a year. Um, and, you know, maybe somebody would want to do this. I think that, uh, you know, I'm going to give you lots of warnings along the way because there's certainly a lot of risk. Uh, but let me just jump into the math of it real quick. So when you're buying anything on this platform using a credit card, uh, I believe it's always going to be a 3% fee. But let's let's just look at something and see if that's um, the one that I did the other day. That's what it was. But let's, let's click buy, um, do a market order, getting some tokens, fees, uh, processing fee 115. Um, oh, that's different this time, right? We, we figured out it is the processing. Um, so this is the 3% fee to invest in marketplace property. So why is it? Oh, I bet I bet if I move this up, though, they, those get closer. Because I think there might be a minimum fee. So let's look at it again. Uh, okay, those processing fees get much closer. Although, obviously, this is still exceeding that 3%. All right, so maybe uh, the math that I built this on is wrong. Uh, again, very, very much closer, still exceeding the 3%. So that is interesting. So um, I'll have to refine my model after today and, and fix this. But I mean, obviously, 37 and 41, those are pretty close. So as, as you get larger, um, it seems like it's getting closer and closer to that number, but it's obviously not just 3%, right? It is, yeah, we're staying six, you know, now we're $6 above it. So we're staying some set amount. Uh, it's going to make my math a little bit off on here. I don't know how I missed that when I was digging into this before. I really thought that I came up with 3% as the number. In any case, I don't think that really changes things too much. So let's, let's go back and look at this. Um, so, you know, had my processing fee. Okay, maybe this is actually $4 higher. Um, if that is, you know, obviously when you're doing your math, you just would have to adjust that. But so if I had $1,000 in, avail in available credit, it means I could invest. Uh, oh, and so have, you know, have the, uh, see, so you've got that fee, but then I'm using a cash back card. And so when I went back and looked, I do actually get my cash back on that purchase. You'll have to verify that you will with, you know, with whatever card you have. So I get one and a half percent cash back on, on that. And so it cuts that 3% down to one and a half, um, still adding cost to your thing. And, and obviously now we know this is a little higher than 3%. Um, but, you know, I think when you subtract the one and a half, it's definitely less than two still. Um, you know, I had a bunch of different balance transfer offers. 
the best one that I found uh, was, you know, 3% for the transfer itself. And then for 14 months, just 1% interest or 0.99% interest. So when I, you know, I stuck this in, I, I worked backwards to figure out, okay, if I can really only transfer um, $1,000 cash, you know, onto that thing, if that's my available credit, then it means I can spend $985.66. Now, again, if this, if this percent is off, you're going to have to change, change the numbers a little bit. Um, when you add in the fee, it ended up being, you know, uh, this number here, $1,015.23. That hits my account, but then I could use my cash back to pay off fifteen twenty three of that, and then transfer the other thousand three you know three percent transfer fee. Now my balance on the new on the card is a thousand and thirty, and I found in in the past it seems like you can, you know, they'll add the fee on top of whatever they say you can transfer. Um, but you you know you want to verify that that with with your card, and maybe you do even less of a purchase. Um, because you can't exceed that 1000 So that's one thing that you have to make sure you understand. Um, and then for mine, you know, what the interest on that, which which was less than 1%, and this was actually for 14 months, it was less than 1% total. Uh, or no, 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 it was um, over, over that period. But, you know, by the time we get the money, you get it in there and everything, you know, I, I didn't even adjust for that. So, I mean, I think it makes it a little bit better because you get it for two extra months. but in any case, um, uh, looking at it as at a year of interest um, and add that, you know, my net interest in fees after backing out the cash back is only $54.54 on my $985.66 purchase. So that means in total over that period of time, I'm paying about 5.5% interest. Now, like I said, I mean, if this fee is supposed to be a little higher, maybe it gets me closer to 6%. And so... That means I can make that purchase now, uh, a, you know, and over the next year hold an asset. And as long as I'm making more than that 6%, um, it's a net gain. And so that might seem great, like, oh, but, you know, I'm, I'm taking a lot of risk for that gain, right? Like if I, if I buy something and it loses money, then I have a new thousand dollars in debt and, um, you know, there's, there's not, uh, you know, and and I, I lost the investment. And so, you know, you want to make sure, in my mind, if I were going to do this, I'm going to buy something that, I, you know, I think is the lowest risk that I can find. Um, another option would be, you know, you could buy a bunch of ones that seem to have very high yields, right, and try to diversify that risk and hopefully hit your, you know, have enough of them win that, um, you know, that you pass that up, even if you have some losers. Um, one of the things, you know, uh, when you go into this marketplace and, you, you know, it's it's really tempting to just look at the yield here and say, oh, well, a whole bunch of these are over that five and a half percent or six percent or whatever it needs to be. Um, I could buy any one of these and be fine. But one of the things that you have to be careful of on this particular platform, and I'm on Lofty, this is the one uh, that I mentioned before um, that you can use a credit card to buy uh, properties on. Um, you're, you know, one of the things you have to look at is, okay, these yields are all just based on last month's cash flow. Um, and so they are constantly changing. And so sometimes they look really good and you can go, you can go from, uh, well, this is, let me give you a good example here. You know, this, this is one of the properties that, um, I, I own a piece of when I bought it, I think my yield was around 18% and it dropped down to 6.25. And part of it is a function of the price changing, but a lot of it is just that last month it made less money than the month before. Um, so you really can't just jump in here, look for the best yield um, and, and pick that. You know, you have to really look at the property and how you think it's going to perform. It's, it's certainly not something that you should be you know, levering up on a credit card and then YOLOing into this, I would, I would never do that. And, and so the yield, I think, is really variable. The next thing you can look at is cap rate. Um, I think I've talked about this a few times on properties, though, is that, uh, you know, their cap rate calculation is lacking, in my opinion. Um, oh, why is that not opening for me? There we go. Um, the 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 math itself is fine but they're you know they're not 
there's no like if you look at this one you've got gross rents you've got no vacancy collection loss you got property management and utilities but i don't even see you know you don't have um repair and maintenance and and stuff like that built into these and so you know you can't just take that cap rate at face value either you're really you're really lacking some numbers from that perspective um and so as i was looking at these i was trying to figure out you know if i were going to do this where where i see um the lowest risk on this platform and and i really think it's this universal lending dao um I bought some of this in an earlier video. I think that uh, I don't have a whole bunch of it. You can see, let's see. Um, I bought 10 tokens of it, just giving it a try uh, in an earlier video. Um, you know, it says my rental yield is 17.25%, but it's, or 23%, but really a couple of days ago, it was showing 7%. Um, and so it made me, like I said, this, this yield is, is very deceptive in how it works. So it made me go into my transactions, um, go into my balance history, click on this export button, and actually got some data here. And this is all of the payments that I received on it so far. So I've only had it a couple of weeks. Um, I was getting just under nine cents every day on my small investment. And then it, that jumped up to, uh, you know, almost 23 cents. And um, this is the number that when I do the math on it, comes close to that 17%, although it's not exact. Um, you know, when I use the number that I had been getting consistently, it was less than 7%. Um, you know, if I, then I did a little bit of math here. If I compare that, this is this number subtracting, um, you know, this interest rate, right? So like if I was gonna subtract that. And so if I went through all this, bought a thousand dollars of it and ended up only having this interest rate, I'd only make nine bucks at the end of the year, right? For having, cause that's the, that's the spread, right? If I'm getting a little bit better. And then it turns out it's gonna be even worse than that because my fee calculation was like $4 off. So I'm gonna make like five bucks for taking the risk of a thousand bucks on a credit card. That just does not seem like a great a great move. If I'm actually getting this higher interest rate from now on, which I think it's possible, but it doesn't really seem like I should be, um, then the spread's 11%, and, and I'm getting $111 for taking that $1,000 risk at the end of, you know, uh, where, um, and, and so am I really risking $1,000? Like, that's that's one of the things. Like, do I think there's any chance that my investment goes to zero? And then I just have to pay that credit card back out of my own cash. Um, I do. I think that there's some chance of that, right? Like there's some chance that um, the platform goes under and there's no reasonable way for me to liquidate my tokens. There's some chance that there's something, you know, that there's like fraud happening, right? There's, it's a non-zero chance. It's not that I think that that's what's going on, but that this money is just actually going to disappear. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you guys have heard of FTX, but, you know, there is, to, or, maybe, you know, older example, Bertie Madoff, right? Like, there's definitely people that target people looking for easy money. Um, you know, so I think that that's, you know, it's it's possible that I lose it all. In my mind, it's a relatively low chance. And then one of the things that makes me think this is relatively secure is when you look at, that they've only loaned, this is, this is the, um, the balance of all loans. So like when I'm on this, on the universal DAO, I can click here to see all the, all the loans outstanding. Well, they only have $48,000, 48.5 in an outstanding loan balance. And, you know, if you look at the order book, it's 200,000 in market cap. So, um, meaning I believe they raised 200,000, but they're only lending out 48. Now that would explain why, you know, I'm getting less than what the APR is, although that math doesn't work out either, right? Like if you're lending out a quarter of what you said you're going to lend out, how would my interest rate still be, still be half of what I expect it to be, right? Like it, it should be even lower. Um, so there's something weird going on with the math there. Uh, if you've noticed, I haven't been letting this stop me from making purchases because I mean, the main thing is I'm really trying to explore what's possible on here, right? I don't, 
and if I if I lose this money, it's 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 certainly not the end of the world to me. Um, that's why I'm trying to you know it's why I'm not using a ton of money on here. I'm I'm picking an amount that if if this if I got zero back from this, I'm not going to have a problem paying this back. Um, but I think it's an interesting experiment, right? I think that uh, you know if, at the end of the day, if am I going to make money on it or not? I have no idea. But I, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, it does not mean that I think you should do it, right? Like that's just because I'm buying stuff on here doesn't mean it's a good deal. You want to really look at, and I'm just going to get 20 tokens, right? Um, that ends up not being, oh, um, I forgot about this. They don't have a uh, market order. So this is going to be a limit order purchase. Okay. There's a whole bunch of 49.99. Um, so those will be the, that's what I'll put as my limit order. It will buy the cheaper ones first, I'm fairly certain. And so let's see, um, yeah, 20 tokens, limit order. Uh, I'm going to use that visa again. Ah, and here's the calculation. 2.9% plus 30 cent fee. Why did that, that doesn't, that didn't seem like that added up. Um, Limit price. I'm just going to leave it at 50. It should pick up the cheaper ones first. Okay, look at these fees. Plus 30. This is not, it doesn't make sense, right? 2.9 plus 3%. Oh, I get why. it's So this fee is on top of the other fees. That's what's happening. So it's adding in those other fees, and then it's a 3% on top. And so that does mean that the way that I was calculating this... Oh, on here is right as long as I'm looking at this investment as all fees inclusive, right? Like if I plug it into there, it's already doing their platform fee and then other things and it shows this amount, then it's 3% of that total, not 3% of the tokens times the price per token. So now I get it. I, it wasn't wrong. It's just, it's not, that's just why it doesn't equal the platform fee. That makes perfect sense. So now I'm actually spending $1,086 on this. Um, how does that work? Let me, let's think about this for a minute. 1086 why is that? What is that other fee on there? Operating reserve contribution. And this is really strange. Why do we have an operating reserve for... Um, the lending DAO. I mean, then we're just putting money in there. Um, hmm, that's pretty strange to me. Uh, so when I go and sell, I don't get that back out. This seems really tough to overcome, right? With that, uh, with what we looked at as our total profit. Um, this is what uh, one eleven. But we're actually losing another 25 from that operating reserve payment. I'm super curious, and it's it's unfortunate. It's going to take us a year to see how this works out in the end. Um, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to transfer it, um, and I'll give you some updates over time, and, and we'll see see how that works. So let's preview that order. Uh, there should be no slippage, right, because it's not a market order, so it should just look like exactly like what we did. So $50 per token, getting 20 tokens, 30 days. Fees, it's that 3% platform fee that we always pay. Um, they're taking that 25 for the operating reserve, which is really unsure why that is. I'm going to actually ask in the Discord, and if I find out, I'll let you know later. And then I do the processing fee as well on top of that. I'm going to submit that order. And then um, once this hits my account, like I said, I'll credit my cash back. I'll move this over into the, onto that card. Um, and then, you know, a year from now, I'll take a look and see, uh, if what I have in my DAO, uh, you know, for 20 of those tokens, if I've made uh, enough to cover that or not. Um, like I said, I think that this, you know, buying real estate with a credit card is, you know, this, I, I use their lending DAO, so I'm actually buying real estate debt with a credit card. Um, I think it's super risky. I don't think it's something that you should necessarily do. Uh, it's certainly not something that I do for some huge amount of money that I couldn't afford to pay back 
Um, but it, because of how much interest there was in it in that one particular video, I think that um, I want to just you know really like flesh out the math and and you know share with you my thoughts about it. Uh, and again, just because I did it doesn't mean I think you should. Um, but it is you know if if you go into it, I wanted you to be really aware of like what that math looks like. It, you know, it's a lot of people are like, oh, zero percent credit card, it's free money. And I could have done it with a zero instead of the point one one, but I wasn't ever, I couldn't find one that gave me a full year at zero and had that low. It was the combination, right? The transfer fee being low um, beats out the zero percent rate, right? Like a lot of them have a zero percent rate, but a five percent transfer fee. And so um, you're worse off with that than the other. In any case, um, well, I'm not sure if that was a mistake or not, but until next time, I will keep making mistakes so that you don't have to.